I'm going to show you how to set up your brand new DJI Spark for the first time, walk you through the knowledge test and get you flying before you know it. Are you ready? Let's crack the seal on this bad boy. This is a great little tool because it's so small. Don't underestimate this little bad boy right here. The little pocket door over there, and here's the controller. All right, and voila. Oh my gosh. This is a lovely drone. Uh, small, but very robust. Love the fact it has the folding props. I'll squeeze the two levers, unlock. Not bad. So when you tap this button, it reads the battery level. Yes, it's dead. Camera, 1080p, takes really good photos. Two axis gimbal. We have the battery, we have the controller. We have two OCG cables, two, uh, it's USB to USB-C or USB to USB. We have the free SD card and we have the charging cable, charging wire. This charges both the drone and the controller. And we also have two spare props with this neat carrying case over here. That's pretty much it. That's the contents in the box. Let's get this charged up and uh, let's see what this thing can do. Put the SD card in there. Up, pop it up. I'm gonna take a little pen or something and give it a little nudge because it's like a tight area there. And to take it out, you might need a tweezer. Just It's a little nifty, but you'll get used to it. And that's it. SD card goes in and out. It clicks so you know when it goes in and out. The pins face up. Because the pins don't connect to the battery, the pins connect to the board, which is at the top of the drone. Plug in the charger over here. This is the ideal drone, in my opinion, to get if you're a newbie and uh, you just want to do like the simplest things and you don't want to go too crazy. Once it's fully charged, the lights will come off. Pretty much, you just plug it out and then you're ready to uh, turn it on. How do you know when your battery is low? Right now I have two lights out of four, so I'm halfway charged. The same plug that comes with the drone to charge the drone can plug right in here and charge the controller. However, you can use any uh, USB charger and plug it in there to charge. Might take longer, but it still will help you to charge the controller. Always to check your battery, just tap. See, we got four bars green. It is fully charged. This ch controller will be able to fly probably three or four, probably even five spark batteries before it goes from full charge to die so let's just plug this out make sure you plug this in the correct way look at the bottom there make sure you're lining this up the correct way either this way or that way otherwise you'll damage the port at the bottom there just touch the power button there you go it's fully charged and I don't know why but it comes with two cables none of the two are made for iPhone one of the two cables will work for your Android phone new Android phones use this the old Android phones use this so pretty much uh, it comes in the box. Now you don't have to use the cable. However, I would recommend that you have whichever cable fits your phone, that you have it in your in your case or in your pouch or whatever you're going to be traveling with when you're using the drone because you never know where you'll end up flying. And as a result, you might be in an area where there's a lot of interference and the cables will definitely give you better results. All you do is pull it out, get it to the phone first. There you go, that's my USB-C. And there you go. Fits in here, no problem. Yeah. My cable comes out through the back here. It's not being pinched or anything. It's flexible. Squeeze tight the sides. Make sure that the phone is locked in place. And then plug it in at the back. Mm -hmm. There you go, plugs in nice and neat. There you go. Now I'm ready to power things up. If you have Android Play Store or your Apple Play Store and type in DJI Go 4. DJI Go 4. That's the app that you will be using and then you hit install. I have installed it already so I'm just going to click open. For advertising the Osmo Pocket. Just skip that. If you don't have a DJI um, Go 4 account and this is the first time you're downloading the app you will need to create a login. If you had the older app, which is just the DJI Go app, 
you can use the same login credentials for the DJI Go 4. You don't need to create a whole new separate account. Power the drone and the controller on. You have to tap and then hold. Boom. You have to tap and then hold. You will get used to it after a while. That's just the way DJI does all of their products. Absolutely, I just allow everything. Open DJI Go 4 when this USB, yes, with this USB accessory, yes, because this is the drone that I'll be using for this phone. It has been 40, less than 48 hours. You can still purchase refresh care. If you wanna purchase DJI's insurance, that gives you some kind of security. You can go ahead and purchase that insurance. I don't buy DJI Refresh. That's just me. This is just me. This does not mean that this is what you need to do. However, uh, you have 48 hours at the time of when you power everything up, which is right now, to go ahead and make your purchases. Uh, so I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to X that out. I'm going to activate this. Activate your aircraft when you connect it for the first time. Receive your one-year warranty. That's the one-year manufacturer's warranty I was telling you about. Next, we're going to activate it. Read through this if you have the time. Either which way, I don't have a choice. I have to agree, so I'm going to hit that. Uh, name your aircraft, John Arthur Spark. Continue. That's my dad, Spark. So mode two is the most basic mode that everybody flies in, so I recommend as you see, it's recommended there that you start out and learn mode two. Continue. Uh, miles an hour. I'm going to go uh, kilometers per hour because I know where my dad is. They use kilometers. They don't really use miles per hour, so they can relate to that. If you're in the US, you want to go miles per hour. Continue. Uh, beginner mode, I will take that off. Enable palm control. I will enable all of that. Continue. Confirm your aircraft's information. Uh, you will make sure that you have the correct email address that you will be using to correspond with DJI in case of anything. And that will be the email address that's linked to your warranty. Once you've set that up, you click activate. Here we go. They're trying to sell me their extended warranty. Skip that. Activation successful. Uh, tutorial for beginners. I will skip that. You can watch the tutorials. They always help. Uh, you have to take a quiz. Uh -huh. You can skip the quiz four times, so might as well take the quiz. It's a knowledge test. It's very good. How far can you fly a drone? You must keep the drone within your visual line of sight. What is the maximum flight altitude you should fly a drone under FAA? Shoot 400 feet. That Next, if you plan to fly a drone for recreational purposes within five miles of an airport, what must notify the airport and the airport's tra traffic tower? Uh, can you fly a drone near major league sports games? Tell where is drone use prohibited yes within 15 miles of washington dc now can you get authorization to fly a drone for commercial purposes maintaining a remote pilot certification what privacy laws apply to the operation of a drone date and local laws you got to use your state and local laws if you see a passenger aircraft when you are flying a drone what should you do give way to manned air Crafts. That's what you need to do. Where can you learn more about these drone registration requirements? FAA website. That's where you can learn more. And congratulations, you is done. Uh, fly safe. That means it will update the drone and put into the records of the drone where and where you cannot fly. I recommend that you update this so that you know where's safe and where's not safe. Uh, also, there's a way to override and fly regardless of whether areas are deemed safe or not. I'll leave a link right here in the description. You can check that out, but for the most part, you should update. So it's downloading. The there you go. Enter device. Doesn't say anything about firmware updates. Tap to activate new aircraft. Allow. Now it's asking me to scan the box. I'm just gonna scan it here. The device has been activated. Okay, uh, enter device. This is connecting the aircraft to the controller to the phone. So let's do the complete combination. 
it says make sure the battery's in place. That's check. Number two, press and hold the battery's power button to turn it on. Press and hold the RC's power button to turn it on. You can scan the QR code at the back of the controller or you can look for it in the Wi-Fi settings. Here we go. And the code is standard at the back. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can always change that later. Here we go. Everything connected successfully. Here we go. It's telling you to change the password from one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can also name your Wi-Fi ID. So I'm going to name it done. Click next. Uh, you can change the password to whatever you want. I've changed the password. I've changed everything. And it tells you restart the aircraft in order to apply everything. Let it check. Make sure that your firmware is up to date. If you can see it won't allow me to enter until it's checked everything. Quick thing to note here, guys. I did hook the cable up to the computer and launch the DJI Assistant 2 app from the computer and connected it to the drone, which is usually the best way to get firmware updates uh, with the best results. And I did notice that the Spark came with all the version updates complete everything is up to date it came with the most current update and that means that this spark was probably built recently uh, even if you buy a new spark you may not have gotten one that was manufactured recently that comes with all the updates inside it's always good to make sure that your spark is up to date and this one out the box is yours might not be just make sure you do your updates so thought i'd share that with you really quick all right, everything seems to be okay. It's not asking me to update anything. So it says go fly. I guess we will go fly, no? Is that the way it works? It says latest firmware, all of that. Now it says compass error. Now here's the thing. Every time you go to a different state or you go to a different country, I advise that you do a compass calibration. These three little dots, dots at the top right-hand corner over here, you go into the drone, see this one here, that's the drone, that's your obstacle avoidance, that's your controller, that's your Wi-Fi, that's your battery, and that's your camera gimbal. And these three dots at the bottom is general options. Let's go into the drone, slide all the way down to the bottom where it says advanced, go into advanced, and then we hit sensor state. Once we hit sensor state, it's on IMU, let's toggle over to compass over here toggle over to compass and hit calibrate compass okay so it's telling you what to do rotate the drone like this so we will rotate it like this and now it says turn it to the side and then rotate it so we're going to turn it to the side and then rotate it like this keep rotating until it comes off the screen and then it says okay uh, compass is calibrated no problems that's it see the compass uh, calibration has gone away now it says no positioning Addy, and that's because I'm indoors I'm not outdoors and as a result it cannot pick up GPS because it's indoors and that means it's going to use the downward sensor to keep it still which is still not a bad thing the downward sensor does a really good job obstacle avoidance that's the little red dot at the top there just click that make sure that everything is on maximum altitude 120 return to home also should be 120 that's done that is done battery this gives you battery information gimbal uh, this tells you the speed at which when you roll this lever here to move the gimbal down and up as you can see, it tells you how fast it's going to move. My dad's going to be taking pictures primarily, so I don't want it to move too too, too fast or too slow. Uh, video, usually you want a slow moving gimbal. Pictures, you just want to line up, so you want a little more speed when you're doing pictures, generally. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit for him. Let's get the pitch speed a little slower. I think that's good enough. You find what works for you. 33 is the number that I have for him. Uh, the camera settings are here. If you're on record mode, it's red. You toggle this switch. It changes to photo mode and then the shutter button becomes white. 
and then you toggle this back again you go back into video mode you click settings I recommend you leave it on auto if you're a beginner um, auto does a very good job at handling everything for you whether you're in video or whether you're in photo mode just leave everything in auto that's the settings for the spark just leave everything in auto uh, get out there and fly speaking of which I've got to get out there and fly myself Take off. Pop this drone into sports mode just by hitting this switch right here. 